Carlos and Omar, if you swear to protect the travelers of the night and bring my vengeance to those who would bring them harm and rise <laughs> as my fist of vengeance as my podcast co-host. <laughs> <laughs> What I love about <laughs> what I love about these intros is that you I really have no idea where either of you are going. <laughs> Welcome back to Play Hype Dialogue. This is your co-host Mela. I'm here with Carlos and Omar, and we're here for a discussion of the Disney Plus Marvel show Scarlet Scarab. Oh shit, <laughs> I mean <laughs> I mean Moon Knight, because Moon Knight was in this. Moon Knight is in this <laughs> he's, he's that that? moon knight is the main character um <laughs> but i think we all know that scarlet scarab stole the show mm-hmm. so um hey guys how are we i'm excited to talk about this show i waited and waited to watch it and then when i did i was like oh so i'm just gonna watch all of it right now and did in one sitting because um, that's how I roll. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually jealous of you because we wa- I watched it week to week and it was like excruciating waiting for the next episode. Omar, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I like this. Um, I didn't start. I got, okay, so I wasn't watching it for a bit. Um, and then I just got a bunch of texts from friends being like, hey, <laughs> what do you think? And I was like, oh. I have to like put on my Egyptian hat and watch this. And though I was I was looking forward to watching it though. And um yeah. So I'm excited to chat. But I watched half of it. So I started watching it when episode 4 was already out. Mm-hmm. So I only had to like experience the waiting for like the the final one which actually was the one I was like shit, I want to watch this. So Nice. So you were right in between. Yeah. Us. Um so let's there's so much Marvel stuff going on right now as well mm-hmm. um there's just been like back-to-back shows and movies coming out so i thought we could just start real quick by kind of reviewing i guess like our relationship with marvel like how much have we seen maybe specifically that's come out recently um so for me i i dr strange just come out just dr strange just came out which i did see but we won't talk about on this episode because i think you two haven't seen it and also i don't want to spoil it for anybody listening because it just came out but we've been having we had spider-man we've been having the shows back to back so um carlos what is your like level of familiarity with the mcu <laughs> um so the viewers <laughs> cannot see <laughs> sorry that laugh was really funny <laughs> so the reason i was giggling is because um uh, mela and omar can see this but every zoom call i have i have in the same position and behind me on my wall are lots of posters featuring marvel characters mainly there's other characters as well but mainly marvel um so broadly big marvel fanboy um very much into that universe um specifically with the mcu i've seen a good chunk maybe like 90 percent of the movies um i saw several in theaters i saw black panther in theaters three times um like i was like take my money take my money (laughs) Uh, because it was so good um haven't seen multiverse of madness yet um it did get partially spoiled for me um but i'm still interested in seeing how it plays out what happens. Um, yeah. Um, I have You're like, sorry, you're into the comics as well. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I enjoy the comics, um, enjoy some of the video games. Um, but in terms of the MCU specifically, I've seen most of the movies, miss some of the shows. Um, like I still haven't seen WandaVision because I was trying to finish the dissertation. <laughs> I know, I know the the look. I, I know, I know. Um, but Moon Knight was dope. <laughs> Omar, what about you? I am a fan of the X-Men, which is like kind of the extent of my... <laughs> but um, I haven't seen that many of the... I haven't seen any of the Spider-Mans, none of the... Th- no, I, I saw the the last Thor one because it looked fun. Ragnarok, and it, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah Ragnarok. Um, I haven't seen any of the Iron Man's... None of the Captain Americas. Wow. <laughs> so I really only saw um, Black Panther, which I went in theaters to watch. And 
um the what were they the age of ultrons the avengers end games i saw those and then <laughs> yeah. because you two i've been watching a little bit more because i i also saw eternals you know because we discussed right. that we did and um uh, Moon i do want to see wandavision i haven't yet either oh my god you guys gotta watch wandavision <laughs> yeah. um yeah, sorry. Go see, on. I do. I do want to see um, Shang Chi and, and the and the Ten Rings. I haven't seen so it yet. So good. So, but yeah, I I would say I'm definitely the least um, MCU here. Cool. And then I'm. I guess I'm kind of in the middle. I also got. I got into the MCU when Black Panther was coming out, and I kind of I wanted to see it, and I asked, "What do I need to see before that to get like the references?" And there wasn't much time. So I think I watched like a handful of like the most important early films before seeing that. But after seeing Black Panther in the theaters, I kind of went back and watched all the movies. Um, and I've now seen them like a couple of times each. And I've seen most of anything that's come out since then. I've mostly seen in the theaters. And I've seen all the shows, the Disney Plus shows, not like the, not the old ones um, that were on Netflix. But except What If, because... Wait, Whatever, man. But what, what if it's on, supposed to sorry what was on netflix well now they're on netflix like daredevil and oh i did see a little bit of daredevil but what were the other ones called? luke cage was fun um, luke cage jessica, jessica jones, jones. Iron I'll, Fist. I'll watch them at some point agents of shield like I, didn't, I haven't seen any of that um so i'm a fan of kind of like i like what they do with the mcu specifically with all the interconnections i'll eat that right up mm -hmm. but i'm not like a comic book oh i hate that fan. part oh damn like all the <laughs> i'm like this is too messy i love it i mean I the comics right are up. worse <laughs> yeah 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 so now that we're kind of situated with that let's do something a little bit fun before we jump into the meat of moon knight which is what would your superhero persona be carlos <laughs> So this is tough, but it's also something that my nerdy ass has been thinking about on and off for like decades. <laughs> right, sure. So it doesn't have to be like the definitive one. I guess just pick, pick one for today. So like uh, Omar, huge X-Men fan. Um, a lot of the art on my wall um, is X-Men related. Um, I love them as a metaphor for like marginalized people, queer folks, people of color, like they're dope. Um, so my power, like the first sort of power I would want is like a Jean Grey telekinetic um, power, but not the way they did her in the 90s animated cartoon because whack, um, she like moved a lamp and was like, oh, Scott, and like passed out. And I'm like, no, that is not the Jean Grey I know and love who becomes the Phoenix, like, no. Um, so that, and probably very Moonlight-esque. Like, I would love to rock an all-white suit and just, like, fuck people up. It's like, uh, you know, we can see you. And I'm like, yeah, you can. And I'm going to fuck you up. And just, like, smash them into cars and throw stuff around. Like Not what I expected. Oh, yeah, no. I'm going to, like, very... The system is fucked love, up. Like <laughs> I love how I love how Carmelo was like, what's your superhero persona? Meaning, like, what would your name be? And Carlos was like, oh, no, but here's my entire... <laughs> actually i don't have a name i i that's like the one thing i'm like eh, but i got costume ideas like mm. you go omar and mella while i put on my costume piece um oh is he actually gonna go put on a costume i don't know but you got this omar okay um it's funny because you definitely told us about this in the group chat before and i didn't think of anything hilarious <laughs> but I do like the idea of showing up in the all white costume, all white suit, actually, because my dad owned an all white suit and he had the audacity to show up to someone else's wedding wearing it. And he was like, he told me, he was like, I felt so bad. Everyone thought I was the groom. And I was like, well, no shit. Who thinks of going to a, someone else's wedding in an all white suit? Me. I thought about doing that to actually Mella's wedding. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think I can do that <laughs> without talking about it first. So I was like, I'll wear a blue shirt and then I'll like put something else to like throw it off. But very classy. 
<laughs> I would have done that with you. So what would my superhero name be? Omar the Wedding I, Destroyer. That, <laughs> it's like, I might not save the world, but listen, you got to give me points for effort. A for effort. That, that, that would be me. Okay. A for effort. In a, in a white suit that's just a little bit um, wrinkled. So... <laughs> Okay, so Omar's coming through in the white suit. Carlos is coming through in the white elaborate cape with a, I don't know what to call that, that you put on, but you look fantastic. We don't have a name for Carlos though, yet. No, maybe at the end of the episode, All right, we'll, we'll think about it. it. Maybe out. we'll come back to it. I don't even have one either. And I came up with this problem. <laughs> this but I just want to say, I always have this issue. Like my name doesn't, I've never come up with like a cool Okay, I have a lot of cool nicknames, I will say that, but never one that was like superhero -y. Like I remember when I was in, the, in a dance squad, we all had like cool names and we couldn't come up with one for me. So we were like, Mellow Mella, which doesn't make any sense because I'm not a mellow person. I'm like, this is not working. Not at all. <laughs> um, so for now, I guess we'll call me Mellow Moves because that used to be my Instagram name and it was cute. And I, I literally I sing to myself when I know I'm going to see you. I'm like, I don't dance now. I make, I make mellow moves. moves. <laughs> that, that'll be my superhero intro music. So, all right. So we're in good shape. Cardi B um, appears in your superhero advertisement. <laughs> hey, hey. Let's talk about Moon Knight. Overall thoughts on the series, just first impressions coming off the top. Omar, what'd you think of it? It was it was good. It was good. Um, was it the best Marvel related thing I've ever seen? No, but I did like it a lot. I love anything uh, that goes into ancient Egyptian mythology. I wanted to see more of those, but I was you know I was happy with it. Um, I think what it was is like the like it started off a little slow for me but episode six was to me the best one by far the best episode people talk a lot about episode five which i thought was great the amazing acting but episode six was the perfect wrap-up for me so i was very happy with how it ended and my habibti Layla, i love her <laughs> so much i love what she represents i love what she yeah which he does the first Egyptian superhero. Like, let me tell you, I was, I was like, oh, this, this couldn't have gotten any better. So yeah, uh, that's all I'll say for now. Carlos, what did you think? Yeah, no, I was really excited. Obviously I was very nervous um, given some of the things I'm sure we'll talk about today. I'm just like, oh, how are they gonna do this? And with some of the Marvel uh, canon, given when it was created, some of the characters are written in kind of like racist, orientalist, like sort of really problematic ways, um, which again, I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, but overall, I thought it was dope. Um, uh, Layla's character, who will um, likely become the, the officially with her own spinoff or um, own movie even would be dope. Um, like she was dope when she, even before she becomes, um, yeah the avatar like when she busts out that uh necklace into swords i was like oh like loved it loved it like she's and she's such an amazing actor and like she has the range so like love her oscar isaac is bay i would gonna keep this g because i know my mom listens to the show i love oscar isaac so seeing him in all of his range and in all of his outfits i was like yes daddy yes <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I thought it was really good. And um, from one week to the next, I, I couldn't wait to see what happened next. I thought it was really compelling. I thought Oscar Isaac really held it together as a series, just like his, I mean, because it was so much about him and the, and the different personalities. So he got, he had so much screen time and he was so incredible. I thought if you had somebody who wasn't pulling that off it would have collapsed as a series but he mm -hmm. just pulled it off and more like it was just I thought he was incredible and I thought it was it was one of my favorite like one of it's in the top half for me of the Disney plus series so far 
I agree that Layla was the the dopest character and she was the other thing that really kept it going. I was also, as Carlos said, was a, a little bit, not, I don't know, I was a little nervous and not sure about it seeing the previews. I was like, what, what are we doing here? But I know Marvel has been working hard to get their representation game on point. Um, and so I wasn't sure how they were going to pull it off with the representation of DID and also with delving into the kind of type of Egyptian mythology that they were doing. And we'll spend most of the episode talking about that. I thought they did a pretty good job. Um, and just story-wise, yeah, I thought it was really good. I slightly disagree with you, Omar, about the last episode. I also thought episode five was excellent and promised something a little stronger. And I think episode six was dope, but I kind of like, I felt like some things hit the cutting room floor with the episode that made me, and I was missing them. I was missing a couple things. So I thought they didn't mess it up. Like it didn't, you know, crash and burn, but it didn't like stick the landing the way that I had hoped for. Mm. So that was kind of, but it's still really, really good. Yeah, I see what you mean. I remember like really the episode ended for me when Layla became the avatar <laughs> and just, right. I was like, all I need that's all I need but yeah the ending ending I was kind of like wait what just happened yeah some, there was some confusion and I get that before I forget I just want to shout out I know this is random because fantastic acting um do y'all remember in episode six the dead cop who Tarot spoke through to Layla yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it was that was really good acting to me <laughs> Like the guy's like playing dead, but he's like still, and his mannerisms were just like terrible. I was so impressed. I was like, who is this random actor? We need to hire him again. Yeah, you <laughs> nailed really it. Also like pointed him out. I was like, yeah, he needs recognition. He needs to get hired. Who is it? Find him. So. So I think this is going to be pretty quick, but real quick, let's do favorite characters. Omar, who was your favorite character? Layla. Even before... Like yes became the the so she was the superhero before she became the avatar in my eyes so nice easily quickly became my favorite character i kind of shipped her and and um oh gosh i forgot the names not mark who was the other one steven steven i kind of shipped her and steven together i was like look at y'all being all nerdy together i like it but yeah layla number one hands down by far boom Carlos? I mean, for the sake of the episode, I want to pick somebody different, but like Layla's fucking dope. Um, <clears throat> but I guess I'll pick Mark slash Steven. <laughs> you can pick who you want. It doesn't have to be for them. Be, be true to yourself. I mean, uh, y'all know I'm thirsty. So like every scene where Oscar Isaac was like half naked or tied to the bed or I was just like, Oscar I Isaac's body was gross. <laughs> I mean, it's a good body. It's a good body. I want to watch Dune. The I want to watch Dune solely to see Oscar Isaac in a state of undress. Um, Oscar Isaac, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna say Mark slash Steven. If I had to pick between the three. Because spoilers, there's a third personality. Um, Steven's probably my favorite. I love his nerdy, uh, bad British accent. So Steve, Steven was very lovable. I'm also torn. I think Layla, Layla was definitely my favorite character. I want to say, I've been thinking about this. And I think this it's, would be accurate to say that I think she's my favorite and the best like woman adult woman character that we've met yet who's like a suit one of the superheroes because um black widow was always like not a super relatable character because she just they humanized her over time but it's like she comes in and she's just like super sexy super spy like it's just mm -hmm. not that relatable I, you know I, li I liked her but I didn't really care for Captain Marvel. And then there was Scarlet Witch, who's like interesting, but it's like kind of all over the place. Um, and same thing, it's like kind of tough to relate to as a character. And there haven't been, there have, there have been other 
women characters um but who have gotten the chance to step all the way into the superhero role there were a couple mm. in black panther and the, i think they'll be developed in the next one as well Hopefully. but i think she's my favorite woman character so far in everything um i also really liked echo from the hawkeye series but we didn't see mm-hmm. that much of her um so and she's getting her own series so i loved her but i i also thought the scenes where Oscar Isaac was doing Mark and Steven were just delightful, which isn't a character, but just watching him do those two characters together was some of my favorite moments. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes. The liminal space where they're side by side. Like I love that whole yeah. arc. Um, but just speaking about women characters, I think hopefully with Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, and with the Echo series, we get more from Nakia. Um, from Echo and from um, Layla in season two or in her own spinoff um, because I do think in terms of deep female characterization deep um, pools of character and story and backstory for the women characters there's not as much as we would like like we didn't get the Black Widow movie until after she died in the main continuity mm. like it's like or we could <laughs> just give her that. the movie when it's time like so I'm really hoping that Layla gets treated better. Um, I think she's. Season. I think Marvel would be dropping a huge ball if they don't do something with Layla. And I don't. I genuinely believe her own show would be so needed and so important. And I don't want it to be just like Moon Knight season two. I genuinely feel like she can hold her own in her own show and I, what she does for representation to me is is so important. And I, and I feel like there is a lot of interest in her. I think that there's more interest in her than in Moon Knight, if I'm being honest, as a character. From what I've seen, I might be wrong, but I'm seeing more people going like Layla crazy, you know what I mean? Just really into what she's what she's offering. So I th- hope that she gets her own. It's interesting too, because the possibilities are wide open with her because they've kind of like constructed this character from the scraps of other characters. So it's a lit and they've redone it, her backstory. So it's kind of like they cut and paste together this character, which mm-hmm. means that their possibilities are wide open. I think she'll definitely be in the next like Avengers team up film. And that being said, I do want to keep in mind that one of the things they're doing with this um, phase of the MCU is like every movie and Disney Plus series has introduced like one or two or three like new hot new characters. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of times they're representing groups that like haven't gotten much play yet in the MCU. Um, So new women characters, new characters of color, new younger characters. Um, new characters with different abilities and different mental states so I'm interested and I'm excited but I also recognize that like we haven't picked up a lot of threads that they've put down so far just because they've been laying so many threads so like you guys didn't see WandaVision but there was a character introduced in that show who I think they're expecting to pick up as the character maybe Photon um, was one of her comic book names um but anyway i just th- there's been a lot of kind of new characters introduced so i'm interested to see who's going to get what going forward but also i'm excited for how they'll they'll weave everyone together yeah they definitely and, have years and years of content <laughs> uh, okay. yeah and as long as they do it well um because <clears throat> i don't want to see her get her own show and then fuck it up like and make it a flop like if they can do what they did with Moon Knight but like improve it because there's so much she can do like given who she is as a character as we know her already like the um sort of air quotes stealing that she's doing like they could do a different kind of show so it's not like a superhero show but it's a show that has a superhero um in addition to being a superhero show because I want to see her pull out her wings and kick ass and take names um but yeah, I think it's it would behoove Marvel to do that. I haven't seen the movie, so this is not a spoiler. And if it is, it's just 
luck. Um, I know America Chavez is in right. the Multiverse of Madness. Um, and so she's um, a Latina character. Um, you've got the, the, the twins that Wanda has in WandaVision. Um, again, I haven't seen it, but like they bring them in. And one of her sons, at least Billy, is in the Young Avengers with America Chavez and some of these other um, yeah, young they, characters. They got- Plus Miss Marvel is coming out. Yes. So there's like a lot of room for them to do some really cool, fun stuff with these characters that are newer or take up the mantle of older characters, but being their own selves. Um, and just the actor who plays um, Layla, May Kalamo, Kalamo, I'm butchering her last name so badly. Kalamawi? I'm that- Listen, I'm Egyptian and I've never heard that name before. Okay, cool. <laughs> Even I was kind of like, wait, what? How do I say this? And which is also why, if you've noticed, I have not said it. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll let me put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> hard today. No. Uh, but she's dope. Like, I don't know if either of you have seen the, the Hulu show Rami. Um, she plays his sister on that. And she's amazing. Um, so I have no doubt that after this season of Moon Knight that she could carry a show by herself, which then gives her, um, in terms of characters, they can bring in other Egyptian superheroes. They can engage with other um, avatars of the um, Ennead, the Egyptian gods, as exist in the, the Marvel universe. Like there's room for her to do other stuff. And I want her to have some women friends, like... Black Widow had no women friends. Um, Ms. Marvel had one woman friend and then lost her uh, for decades. Like she- Captain Marvel. <laughs> Do you remember that- Yes, Captain Marvel, scene? excuse me. Do you remember that scene in um, Endgame when they're like, they're all, they were losing? And then Marvel was like, oh, we're gonna have a women empowerment moment. And for like two seconds, all the yeah. women heroes just show up. And I was like, okay. And then it was like- it was That was it. I was like, Come on now. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, I loved it because it was this awesome like moment, but then it didn't go anywhere. So like there's a comic um, series called The A-Force, which is like an all female uh, story. You've got um, all of the women from the X-Men. You've got uh, Black Widow. You've got um, a bunch of the mutants. So you've got Dazzler, you've got She-Hulk, you've got Medusa, who's one of the Inhumans. Um, all of these characters, it's like, they're not at a loss for stories. They're not at a loss for characters. It's who you choose to bring in. So this is not a Moon Knight thing and then I will shut up and we can talk about Moon Knight, but in the Avengers, Wasp is an original Avenger and she names the team the Avengers. She didn't show up until Ant-Man versus, or Ant-Man and the Wasp, if you count, actual on screen and not in a flashback with um, Michelle Pfeiffer's character getting stuck in the quantum realm. So it's like, you have the source material that you could talk about these characters in good ways. And you could have more than a cheesy girl power moment on screen, which they didn't have with Layla in um, Moon Knight, but she got to be a badass. And there were moments that were like, fuck yeah, but that were part of the plot that went somewhere and weren't solely for um, getting them brownie feminist points. Um, Cause she's a well-rounded character. She's a real human. She's a real person, um, which I just love to see. And now I will get off my soapbox and we can continue. <laughs> yeah, I will say, I feel like everybody's pretty hard on that moment in Endgame. Like people- are I like, loved oh, it. I loved it, but I also like, sorry. That's okay. Um, but it definitely like, it made me cry. I was like, look at, look at him. So I feel like I get it. Cause it was, it was like, what, how would this happen <laughs> in the middle of a battle? And it doesn't come from anywhere and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, but I, I still enjoyed that, that moment. Um, and I agree with everything you're saying about what could happen for Layla going forward. Um, and I know they did draft the, there was a draft of the first Avengers movie with Wasp in it. But it was like instead of Black Widow, like there could just be one lady, <laughs> and then they decided to use Black Widow. <laughs> um, so anyway, what since we're already talking about Layla, um, is there anything else we wanted to say about her in terms of representation? I thought her look was amazing. 
that yeah. moment where she pulls out the wings is amazing. Her that was so was beautiful. beautiful. It was really, I remember earlier in the episode, Tower it was like, you can be my avatar. And Layla was like, no, thanks. I was like, no, I wanted it so bad. And then when it happened, I was like squealing practically. I will be honest. I don't necessarily understand the costume and how it relates to Tower Red. To be honest. But I'm also not complaining. I asked my cousin, my cousin's an, um, an Egyptologist. And I was like, wasn't that a little bit like, does it make sense? And he was like, yeah, but you know, Tarawet also is like a goddess of protection and the wings are of protection. Maybe that's why. So mm. anyway, but there's that. But I remember the moment when um, the little girl asked her like, are you an Egyptian superhero? And she was like, I am. And I was like, oh, that moment meant a lot to me. And I think maybe that's that was- why six was number one for me because that, it's such a small moment, but to see this little girl looking up to a woman and being like, are you a superhero? And she's not even like, no, 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 no. She's like, yeah, I am. I'm like, oh. That's it's what great. I, it was definitely one of the best moments of the whole series. That moment and the moment where she pulled out the wings were like definitely two of the like maybe top five moments of the whole series. Mm-hmm. And my favorite thing about it was that she was just like, yeah, I am or whatever. She said yeah. that it was, because as, they as the 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 like child character said or whatever young person character said it i was like i hope they don't like pause right now and be like am i an egyptian superhero (laughs) well 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 like what would that even mean like and she was just like uh yeah (laughs) i'm like see this feels so real because she was just like yes i fucking am (laughs) i was like this is what i'm here for and then she just keeps it moving because there's a fight going on. I hate right. when characters are like in the middle of life-threatening situations and then pause for annoying conversations, which admittedly they did do in this show an episode or earlier, but that's okay. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed that moment. And that's another one of those that some people are sort of looking at um, similarly to that um, uh, end game scene. Um, and I feel like it just hits different because So she was reticent about becoming an avatar because she saw what Kanshu was doing to um, Mark slash Steven for all this time, like ruined her marriage, like had been putting him through the ringer, um, just jerking him around and was like not being good to him. So she's like, "Um, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I sign another contract with a god and get fucked over. And then when she does it, because there is literally no other option, She's like, yeah, I'm going to be a superhero. We're going to do this and we're going to save the day. It goes somewhere. She immediately continues the fight. And thanks to her, um, Moon Knight is able to, because Kanchu gets free, Moon Knight is able to get the powers back and then is able to join the fight and they're able to save the day together. Um, Like she is driving the story forward as an Egyptian superhero, as a woman superhero, as an Egyptian woman superhero. Like it, it checks the boxes. Makes sense as a yes. moment. Like you could see it that happen. Whereas the other thing just t- it takes you out a little bit because it just didn't make a lot of sense. Like it was just like why are like all the lady superheroes convening, right? Where this was like a totally believable in universe moment. So it doesn't take you out of the story and it's like a cheerworthy moment. And I thought I could see why some people would be like oh, you know, very a, a little contrived, but I didn't think it landed as contrived. I thought it was just like a woohoo. Yeah. Because she gotta do shit. She gotta get shit done. So it's like I am not a conversation. Not be, not yeah. be. <laughs> Did you see my hair? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love the costume. And like Tawaret is like, oh, we're gonna come up with something fun. I was like, Okay, that's awesome. Um, and then because she doesn't have a map, discuss the the <laughs> Carlos pronouncing Tower. Oh Tower. my god, I was gonna. Say, <laughs> like, we're not, we're not gonna just gonna like like skid over that <laughs> that whole like Latinx pronunciation of the. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, when he was like, <laughs> that I went decided. <laughs> The costume, oh, love it, oh, I'm glad that it wasn't like this, like ridiculously sexy. Um, yes. Like, re- like unbelievable, doesn't make sense kind of costume. Like yeah. it was, it was 
really cool. And I was at first I was kind of like, wait, cover your face because your identity. But then I was like, no, leave the hair out. <laughs> so it was better. You know, and so that was one of the things that I think could be really relevant in um, her spinoff and in the next season, because she's got a, like, obviously there's going to be crossover between the two shows. Um, that her not wearing a mask is going to put her in the public eye in a similar way that we see with some of the Avengers in the United States. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to deal with Egyptian politics. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be a similar, like the plot of Civil War was like, should superheroes be registered? Should they be on lists to like track them and their movements? I don't know if Egypt would follow something similar now that Moon Knight is causing um, havoc at times. You've got um, Liv's character, the Scarlet Beetle. Scarab. Scarlet Scarab. Scarab. Um, there's probably going to be others because I imagine after Homeboy tried to kill or did kill a bunch of these avatars and try to end the world by killing all of these people that there's going to be maybe other avatars that are chosen by the gods who get to do superhero things as well. So there's so many different threads they can um, overtake. Speaking of avatars, I loved Hathor's avatar. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. She was dope. I won, I'm, and I'm hoping that she didn't die. In, in, no, they just like sliced them down at the end. I'm like, no. Yeah, what? but I'm hoping that she comes back. I don't know what it was about her. There, there were some really interesting like side characters that just stuck with me. So like her, the cop. Um, I want, I want more. So I hope that she uh, comes back. Also, wait, no, that's it. Yeah, I will I'm, say, sorry, were you done, yeah, Omar? I will say more in response to what Carlos was just saying about whether or not they're going to pick up the thread of like her being like a known superhero. Now, I think it was not totally clear to me if people could see the gods fighting in the last episode. People other than Moon Knight I don't and her. I the gods. I think it Because was... in earlier episodes, they couldn't remember. They would like flash back and forth showing his view and then other people's view. So, there was definitely stuff moving around and like for sure i just wonder i don't know what, how they're gonna pick that up like is it does everybody know what was going down or is it gonna be like oh there was some sort of crazy explosion and like a street fight you know what i mean they, they could mm -hmm. do that cover-up angle does um, this take place after the turn so this is where we get into some of like the mcu mcuing like is this after eternals this is definitely probably after the snap so it's like half your population disappeared and then reappeared. Some creature tried to emerge from the earth, maybe. And now there's um, like this weird thing happening near the pyramid. Like there's some world building, not world building, yeah. it, but like MCU pieces that have to be clarified going yeah. forward. Yeah, I mean, I think some things it's like they are happening at like basically the same time, just in different areas. Mm -hmm. I also think their big thing that they're setting up right now is the multiverse and multiversal conflicts. Yeah. So I think that's going to take center stage. And I'm also interested to see, I wonder if like anything from Black Panther, which I think they're doing Namor as the villain of that, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's confirmed or a rumor, but I, I think it's, I think it's, it might be confirmed. Um, I wonder if they're going to address anything about that in that, like even just with the scene saying like, we got like this going on over here, this going on over here, like things are wild. Now this is happening. There's some yeah. really cool possibility because the goddesses of Black Panther are Egyptian goddesses. Mm -hmm. And so now that we've been introduced some other Egyptian deities, I'm like getting excited, hoping that Layla could go to Wakanda and be like, "What's up?" I mean, up? there was there was a couple of Easter eggs for that in the Moon Knight series. Where, when Tabaret says, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Oh yeah, like the the that ancestral plane. plane, but also they mentioned the Panther Goddess. What's her name? Did anyone remember? Uh, off the top of yes, in one of the scenes in like the second or third episode, they mentioned Bast. But I would, they're like not there. I, would, I just want, I just want 
Layla to go to Wakanda and be like, what's up? Yeah. And it would be amazing. I don't know if it's like, I wonder, I kind of feel like it's late. I, I kind of feel like maybe these two things are not tied I, together. Movie. I'm just hoping that. Yeah, it would be cool though. That's a that's a, a crossover. I would love to see. I'd be so excited. Yeah, because I mean, she could just show up, like, because clearly, like, uh, Shuri, Nakia, uh, if not, I'm not sure. Did they decide for sure that they're not recasting Chadwick, and so the Black Panther is going to like mantle is going to transfer to someone else? Not the second movie, they won't. I I mean we could talk about that in another episode, but I, I kind of think that he should be recast after this next movie because the character is important. It's so important. Yeah. You know, well, I and- think they're going with like I think Mbaku is gonna play like a significant role along with Shuri and Nakia. And then I think they're going with a I think they're going with a like he a the child had as a child with Nakia or something. Mm. I think they might grow that child up or something. I'm not uh, sure. This is just what I've heard. I what mean, I'm so- hoping is that like that the second Black Panther movie takes place after the snap, but before it gets fixed. Mm. So they'll that's- probably just pull in a new a new Black Panther from a multi from another universe with somewhere in the next couple of oh, movies. Clever, yeah. So that's my thing. I haven't seen Multiverse of Madness yet. I'm not going to spoil it here because I haven't seen it. But from what I did hear, there's possibility for things to happen. So in the MCU, or in Marvel Universe, there are mad gods. There are mad multi, uh, mad universes. There are um, mutants. And so this has been my thing since Fox acquired, or since Disney acquired Fox. Like, how are you going to bring the mutants into the MCU? Because right. I believe Namor is a mutant in Atlantis. Atlantis hasn't been talked about in the MCU yet. So does the events in or following, and you don't have to answer, Mela, um, Multiverse of Madness, does that bring mutants into the main continuity? The period of adjustment with that would cause all sorts of chaos and stirs where they would have to, like, who else is coming through that portal um, with the mutants? Right. And but then even how without do Doctor with Strange, even without saying anything about that, we've also had the Loki series and we also had Spider-Man where we saw multiverse crossovers of the same character looking different. So mm-hmm. I definitely think they can bring in a T'Challa in a bunch of different ways if they decide to go with that. Yeah. Um, but the reason I was thinking about it because just sort of taking, seeing where Layla goes next, like, going to Wakanda, engaging with the Wakandans would be would be so dope um, because they have to know about her. Like, just like the way they engage in technology and research, like they're going to know that there's um, this superhero. Um, and I do want to see more about the gods. So I emailed y'all a bunch about the MCU and the gods. Like, so the gods as presented in this are different from the Asgardian gods. So like Thor and his crew are more like aliens from another realm that come to earth. Whereas the Egyptian gods as presented in the the series, similar to the way they're presented in the comics, as I understand, I'm not a super expert on the comics in that way, um, are actual gods. So like the celestials emerge from Big Bang, create the universe, And as part of their creation, there are like old gods that exist. And those old gods give birth to um, Osiris, Bast, um, all of the sort of Egyptian gods. And then there's different regions, like there's an Incan uh, pantheon, there's a Yoruba pantheon, like there's all these different. Carlos. So I I think. uh, (laughs) Sorry, what did you say, Omar? No, I was like, I was like, where are you taking us? I think, but so I think like they have all these pantheons of gods, but and I think they're going to deal with that in Thor 4 because they're doing Gore the God Butcher. And I think they're going to be touching on this person that's been going from pantheon to pantheon of gods and knocking them off. So that mm-hmm. should be pretty interesting. Yeah. So, Carlos, did you want to finish what you were saying? <laughs> no. 
So we'll see you in the ep- after Thor 4 comes out. We'll do a special episode on Thor 4 and we'll do a special one just on the gods. Yes. Yeah. Be it'll amazing. be interesting to see where it goes now that they're bringing all these different pieces together. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the pieces, where the ships fall, as they say. So and I want to move us along too, because we haven't talked yet about a big piece of the series. We've referenced it, but we haven't talked about um, the kind of representation of dissociative identity disorder, DID, mm. um, that they did with the Mark Spector, Stephen Grant character. And pa- pausing here to note that none of the three of us is even remotely an expert on this topic. Nope. Um, <laughs> so we will, we'll, you know, we'll chat about it, but take, you know, nothing that we said is meant to say is meant to be kind of authoritative information about this, obviously. Um, so I've, I've, um, I've, I did a little bit of research about people's reactions, people within that community and people with expertise on that reaction to the representation of it. Um, and it seems like some people, a lot of people feel like it was sort of pretty good, but mm-hmm. with a few, with a few kind of a few not so great pieces threaded in there. I thought it was pretty fascinating that they did manage to pull in this part of this character's identity or kind of reframe this character's identity around around this. Um, and I w- this was the piece that I was kind of worried about when I saw mm-hmm. the trailers. And I was like, I assume that they're gonna like do this well or that they're working to do it as well as possible. But it seems like, you know, kind of shaky ground to trot on. Um, but it seems like they did pretty, pretty well with it with a few kind of, a few problematic tropes are in there. Um, like having like the violent alter ego, I think is a really big one that happens a lot with the representation of DID or what was formerly called multiple personality disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you guys think about this? You could talk about Oscar Isaac's performance of it or just your thoughts about how it was represented. Regarding how it was represented, like you said, like nowhere near even somewhat like knowledgeable about this. So, but there was one moment that I remember you learn about when, you know, you're, you're kind of exploring like different mental health um, conditions where he, where uh, Mark tells Steven, he was like, you were my superhero. Like you saved me. That's actually a really, really powerful uh, moment because you, you know, with certain um, mental health conditions, the com- some of the behaviors or, or, or some of the sort of thoughts that come up is you learn that it's it's important to reframe it, and it's like this that other people might find like a, a, a for example an obsessive compulsive behavior. It helped me, like it saved me, like you know, and that's an mm-hmm. way of reframing certain things which isn't to say like oh this is like it's hard to i don't know how to i don't have the right vocabulary to talk about this but that moment i thought was a very honest and very powerful and 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 something that's not discussed a lot with Mm -hmm. mental health condition that sometimes that these behaviors or personality whatever often come up to save the individual, to help them get through certain moments. And you see it when he was a kid, when when Steven first showed up, it was like just so overwhelmed with reality that Steven came and took him out of that, you know, and, it, and it's a response to trauma. And so I thought that that was very important the way that they handled it. Um, and that's really all I feel I could say. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think you were clear with what you were trying to express. And I agree that the backstory of um, how this, how Mark, how the Stephen Grant persona came to be, I guess, mm-hmm. was was really interesting. And as I was watching it, of course, afterwards I was like googling, right? As I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is like a really interesting choice they're making. And it seems like a lot of that was in line with um, how DID can form. Not that it was perfect, and you know, I'm sure it was far from it, but. Um, I thought that was a fascinating and fleshed out backstory um, mm-hmm. that they attempted to give him. Carlos? Yeah, um, yeah. again, not really my um, lane, but I think 
as a person who's big into horror, um, the use of uh, DID, formerly multiple personalities, or mental health in general, is mm. often used as like a tool for villainy. Like right. the bad guy's a bad guy because they Work. are broken in air quotes or their um, right. mental illness makes them a villain or a serial killer or something really horrible. Um, and so there are a lot of negative tropes that can appear in um, these um, big movies and TV shows. And I think given um, what you've said and um, how it read to me as a viewer, definitely could have been worse. Like um, I think they attempted to handle it um, in a pretty good way. Um, I hope they continue to um, do that. Um, I'm not sure if they had like mental health consultants in the writing process, um, but sure they all that. just don't fuck it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, keep I mean, up the work. Try not to fuck it up too badly. Yes. Because yes. yeah, there's definitely going to be fuck ups. Um, and I, I, yeah, I know some people were commenting then at the end of like the introduction of the Jake Lockley mm-hmm. alter. Um, could potentially be kind of problematic like and here's the like the evil twin <laughs> you know um but <laughs> and speaking of them, by the way <laughs> <laughs> to see where they go with that persona mm-hmm. moving forward and then just like pivoting a little bit to another aspect of mark's identity i i enjoyed the representations of the character's jewishness as well mm-hmm. um i just i like that they they kind of just showed showed um like when they were sitting shiva um and i thought that that was well done i know some there were some like there was a little noise and a little concern because i think oscar isaac is not jewish but i i think it i think it was very well done and i think it's fine um and i wanted to say also that i am i appreciate characters we haven't talked about him being the, I think we said before he's like the first Latino superhero superhero in the MCU. I don't know if we mentioned we, that. We talked about it privately, but we were and we were like, is that accurate? If not, it might be Bad Bunny. So, <laughs> like, I'm not. I, I'm not sure. Um, but I like the fact that like, so we have this character, and like Oscar Isaac is Central American, and they casted his parents and the young version of him and his brother along those lines, right? To yeah. keep his kind of Latino heritage. He's also Jewish and he's also a character that has DID. And I just like appreciate characters that are not always, are not like totally within a box, right? Because we've had these tropes in Hollywood along mm-hmm. the lines of race and ethnicity really strongly. And, and even without race and ethnicity, it's like the pretty one or the like mm-hmm. weird, weird looking funny girl we were talking about this before the episode before we started airing or like the character actor like yeah um or you know like the latino uh, Mm -hmm. or like the jewish character with jewish conceived of in a very particular way um and so i i just like love to see characters that are a little bit outside of that exact mold because to me like that reflects real life and being new yorkers i mean carlos (laughs) 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 two new yorkers in it a, a jersey boy um it's just like you 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 know people and people's identities are a lot more complex than what hollywood does sometimes which is like check off this like very legible box of like this is going to be the character that's going to check this box right mm-hmm. this is going to be like the lady character or like this is going to be the black character um and and put along a set of stereotypes around that but people's social political and cultural identities are can often be nuanced and so i just i like to see that a character like that um and again i I just thought oscar isaac was exceptional i like that they didn't do the kind of jennifer lopez treatment where just like yeah we'll cast her still kind of why or we're not gonna really address it Mm -hmm. although um and and so i did look it up and, and the actors that they got to play his mother himself and his brother were all um latino as well I wonder though, and I was like trying to think back because I, I mentioned like, oh, it's dope that he's Latino to a friend of mine. And she was like, do they ever explicitly state that in the show? And I was just like, oh, 
do they? I don't remember, honestly, but I, I assume that it was understood just because like who was playing his family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think they they explicitly say it. I'd have to rewatch the series to see if there's like a reference, but I mean, he speaks Spanish at the end. Um, uh, but also, I just, I don't think that wasn't really like the focus. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be, if they had cast like, if they had cast his parents and bro- siblings differently and been like, we're gonna, he's gonna be like Russian character and he's just played by a Latino actor, I think it'd be different. But I think they were sort of like, yeah, that's like, that's his ethnic background. Um, but it's not the focus right now of the show and maybe they'll explore it in the future in a future season but Mm -hmm. I also thought that that made sense um, for the focus of the show yeah I just want to jump on quickly to to say yes we need nuance I want nuanced characters because I am a nuanced person we are nuanced people Um, we need to see more of that in um, the media, especially in genre pieces like the superhero genre or subgenre, um, like give that nuance. Um, after I wasn't a big Moon Knight person, but I looked um, him up um, on uh, Wikipedia um, and found out that he was Jewish. And I'm glad that they kept yeah. that in there um, mm-hmm. because oftentimes we don't get um, any sort of uh, background with the characters in that way like I don't know if anyone thus far excluding maybe the Black Panther movie in their honoring of the goddess Bast I don't know if there's any sort of ethno-religious or religious stuff happening in the MCU Mm. um not that it's necessary um especially if it's not going to be done well but I do think it was um nice to include it and um seemingly for it to have been done well like um I know I've seen other things where there are uh really problematic um anti-semitic um caricatures of Jewish people and I don't think there were any of those in this um which is nice to see um which yeah. is the and fucking also, bare minimum <laughs> but nice to yeah, see yeah right <laughs> like, um didn't fuck it up too badly uh and, and then I don't think they like explicitly discuss his Jewishness either it's just that you see them sitting Shiva and you see he's wearing um a yarmulke when he's going to go into his his mother's um Shiva yeah uh, so it's sort of just like it's threaded in there which is the way that yes. we often live out parts of our ethnic yeah, and yeah. cultural identity right but like today's jewish day it's like <laughs> no 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 it's like this is just a piece of him dealing right. with this yeah. really traumatic event that then is woven into the centrality of the story and the narrative um so since we we don't have a ton of time left so i want to just get to um ask if there's anything else about the representation of Egypt and the Egyptian representation in the show because it was such a big part of it that we wanted to talk about how much time you got (laughs) I'm like like, Omar (laughs) so I definitely did my research on this they could not film in Egypt um so the scenes i believe that we see that are supposed to be in cairo actually took place in budapest um i was stunned by how well they did like you know the scene when um they're getting uh like the the big fight scene in in episode six it looked a lot like a street that i've seen Mm. in cairo so i was really stunned and the marketplace in episode three when they first come to egypt i was like whoa this looks like a place that i've been i was and and what i read is that um they found an egyptian community in budapest and like had them all be extras and apparently they got emotional seeing how they transformed this area that's beautiful yeah mohammed diabli he's the director um he said in an interview that 90 percent of the egyptian uh, roles were cast by Egyptian, were cast with Egyptian people, which I thought was unbelievable in the best way, you know. Yeah. So that number one, um, the guys, you know, they, you know, you, you got to like make it work for the for the show. I understand that, um, you know, the the 
like the representation of Amit was a little bit different from what you would see in the mythology, but I think it worked and I loved your design to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I was like mad about it. Like technically Amit is like part alligator, part lion, part hippo, but for them to make her like a, a I'm sorry, not alligator, crocodile. Yeah. So, you know, for them to do that for, I think I thought it made sense though, you know? Um, it was, it was really cool. And, you know, hearing, Egyptian Arabic was meaningful and these little cultural cues like the guy selling like the licorice juice in the market and um, you know the, the it was just a lot of like little hints to it the, the, the Nile ride on the, the, the I'm sorry the Felucca ride along the Nile you're hearing like, you know, people burst out into ululations. Like there were really beautiful moments. And, and, the, and, I, and I, a reason why I held off watching it right away was because I had just come back from Egypt when it started streaming. Mm. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this yet because, you know, I was really missing it. And, and so I was really impressed and, you know, big uh, applause and sh shout out to, um, Mohammed Diab and, and the whole team, the writers, and also Sarah Goher, who happens to be his wife, but is also a writer producer for the show, and what they did, and especially what they did with Layla. Um, so yeah, and you know there were moments that you know that fight scene in episode three on the rooftop. I, I was not a big fan. Like when Homie licked the knife, I was like, no, 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 what are we doing? So that that was a that I was just like, where did, what kind of, this felt like a sort of like 80s Hollywood movie. I was like, what is this? So that was my only problem really. But um, I know some people were still offended. I, I need to read more about that. Um, but yeah, I was, I thought, I thought they did a, a well job. And, and this is what matters when, cause you know, they had uh, the guy writing the musical score was Egyptian. One of the writers, one of the big writers that came in was Egyptian, like, you know, people on the team were Egyptian extra this is it I think that that's so important moving forward in Hollywood that you allow people to tell their own stories and even though Moon Knight technically isn't about an Egyptian character it still takes place in Egypt and it involves so much Egyptian history and whatever mm -hmm. and did a part of me want Moon Knight to be written as Egyptian yeah but I still was Layla made it up for me I was just like oh no she's I'm happy now you know, because of her. So that's my spiel. So yeah. And her they, they did rewrite her from a different yeah. character, um, which I thought was yes critical, basically. The best move. Yeah. The only thing I want to add, I have nothing to add to the conversation except that I also enjoyed the music, mm -hmm. um, the musical score, but also a few in a few of the episodes, the music over the title card in the beginning. Um, was Egyptian music and in a few of the episodes the end credits music mm -hmm. um, was as well and I thought that was that was a super cool um, touch because it sets the, the music is so important it sets the vibe and the context of how you're feeling when you're watching and I thought mm -hmm. that was really smart and well done yeah no we definitely need more of this there's a lot of it happening right now I needed to continue and not just because it's economically viable and mm -hmm. gives these corporations some brownie points but because it is essential to good storytelling is that you have a variety of voices in the room and that you have um, people speaking authentically to a lot of experiences, um, sights, sounds. Um, the fact that they were able to make Budapest feel like Egypt for the Egyptians that live there, like that speaks to the love and care that they put into it. Um, mm. And so I wanna see more of that from all of their properties. I want to see it for Echo. I want to see it for Ms. Marvel, which already um, we'll probably talk about it, <laughs> but I just want that to continue. Like we have the potential, we have the possibility, let's put it into action. Okay, so let's do final thoughts. And in our final thoughts, let's just say, are we getting a season two? Because this was originally presented as a one-off series and then they changed the marketing from series finale, all of a sudden it became season finale. So are we getting a season two? Any final thoughts and what are your hype star, Omar? Um, I'm assuming we'll get a season two. Uh, apparently Oscar Isaac absolutely loved doing this. And apparently it was only, 
you know, a, a, a standalone because of his contract. But, you know, anyway, I'm going on. Uh, yeah, I would appreciate a season two, but I would especially appreciate a season dedicated to Layla instead. So if I had to choose between the two, I'd rather that Layla gets her own spinoff. I'm just being real. Um, final thoughts? No, it was good. I liked it. Yay, anything Egypt and hype stars. I want to say story three, Layla makes it a four. Okay, Carlos. I want a second season and I want a Layla spinoff. Um, I think there's room for them to build out the world and enhance the world in meaningful ways before just throwing these characters into the MCU um, the films um, without any real backstory, like have them go to Wakanda and meet Nakia or Shuri or somebody, have them go to America maybe to like steal some shit from the uh, Museum of Natural History and take it back to Egypt, like something. Um, I think for me overall, uh, Oscar Isaac is bae, so I'm going to say uh, four and a half hype stars. <laughs> Yeah, so um, same thing. I think we're getting a season two where they, where they, because they set up the Jake Lockley reveal at the very end, which mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting to be such a big reveal, like such a linchpin moment as the way they used it. So I do think we're getting a, a, another season. I do really want it. I love Oscar Isaac. Um, I love Layla too. And I, I do, I would like to see either a spinoff for her or maybe like putting her... I'd like to see her interact with some other characters. That would be really fascinating to me. Um, I, I do also want to say that I don't think that she needs a spinoff to validate the character either. Like, so I think like she's, she's going to have a powerful presence and a powerful role, whether she gets her own spinoff or she just gets more time for her story in like the next season or mm-hmm. crosses over in some places, some unexpected places and I just want to say that because I just I don't know I'm just feeling like it doesn't she she can still be a powerful and important character without like checking the box of like getting her own thing but I would love to see anything with her and hype stars is going to be 4.5 for me I just there were some story issues for me as well however it was just a great ride like I just enjoyed it very much so and the acting really elevated it. So that's it for our episode for today. Let's do a quick closeout. Um, and I think we should also close out, which we don't always remember to do, but close out with just a note about where you can connect with us. So you can connect with the show on Instagram at play.hype.dialogue. And you can connect with me, I'm Mela, also on Instagram at Mela Musio. Carlos? I'm Carlos Creates 2018 on Instagram. Okay, and Omar, do you want to share anything or just the, just the show IG for you? This is the show IG for me for now. But... Okay, connect with Omar at play.hype.dialogue on Instagram. <laughs> and any final thoughts? It's not stealing if you're returning it back to where it belongs. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> and on that note, we close out the episode. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye.